Welcome in to the first installment of my 2020 NFL Primer series where I'm going to be doing general NFL videos, particularly in this list formation. Um, so obviously you see the title Top 5 Running Backs in the NFL. I plan to do more videos like this going forward until the NFL season actually starts, uh, whether it's ranking top 5 player at players at their position like this one or a more unorthodox type list um, like one I have swirling around in my head is you know a couple players that I expect to break out in the NFL maybe that's another one in list formation or you know sleeper teams in the NFL another one in list formation not necessarily ranking you know players or teams but it's still within that list formation just kind of priming and preparing you guys for the NFL season because why not With that being said, it was already a lengthy enough introduction. Let me explain how I am ranking these running backs here. So these five running backs that I have on the list and the way I'm going to do the player rankings, you know, their position rankings is I'm going to take, in, take into consideration everything. The most important things will be the 2019 performance and how I expect them to perform in 2020. But I'm going to be looking at essentially their entire careers you know um that being said let's get into it coming in at the number five spot is cleveland browns running back nick chubb now chubb is somebody that i've seen gotten a lot of hype after this season that he had and rightfully so i've seen polls on twitter comparing chubb to ezekiel elliott and even polls saying is nick chubb better than derrick henry i won't go that far yet but i will say he had an amazing sophomore year on a terrible cleveland browns team he was one of the only bright spots on that cleveland team and by all accounts, like that team, he should have had a sophomore slump, but he didn't. He pushed through it, and he had one of the best running back years in 2019. So, of course, let us first look at his 2018 stats, where he had 192 rushing attempts for 996 rushing yards, averaging 5.2 yards a carry, 8 touchdowns, and then in the receiving game, he had 20 receptions for 149 yards, averaging... Uh, 7.5 yards per receptions and two touchdowns but he took it up a notch in 2019 without a doubt where he had 298 rushing attempts for 1,494 rushing yards eight touchdowns averaging I think five yards per attempt and then in the receiving game he had 36 receptions for 278 receiving yards averaging 7.7 .7 yards per receptions and zero touchdowns if i didn't say he had two receiving touchdowns his rookie year but as you could see in the rushing game without a doubt this dude took it up a notch he was in contention for being a rushing leader almost 1500 rushing yards an absolute monster rushing season from nick chubb on the offensive line and a cleveland team that like i said before all regressed the cleveland browns offensive line in 2018 was amongst the top three in the league number two overall i believe and then in 2019 by the end of the regular season they were ranked 23rd in the league um overall and bottom 10 in uh run blocking and on such a terrible offensive line chubb had to break a lot of tackles to even get past the line of scrimmage in fact he broke so many that he led the nfl in broken tackles tied with aaron jones both of them had 32 broken tackles according to what the advanced rushing stats which definitely came as a surprise to me. I definitely thought without, you know, looking at the stats, I definitely thought somebody like a Derrick Henry or maybe an Ezekiel Elliott would have led the league in broken tackles. But no, it was Nick Chubb. And it makes sense, once again, when you go back to the fact that his offensive line was bottom 10 in run blocking. Now, just right off the bat, the thing here is that I am super impressed with his rushing stats here for Nick Chubb. This is definitely among the best in the running back group in the NFL. Definitely worthy of being top five. F basically 1500 rushing yards on less than 300 carries averaging five yards per uh per attempt that's amazing i don't think i've seen a rushing season like that since uh zeke's 2016 his rookie year rushing season but the reason he's at number five is because his receiving stats are definitely subpar in the nfl now the running back is a receiver as well as a running back there are two players in one kind of which leads into the argument why they should get paid a little bit more different conversation for a different day but that is why nick chubb i have him at number five i do expect them to have a good 20 season 2020 season by the way because the browns actually improved their offensive line in the offseason they got jack conklin who helped derrick henry 
get to where he was these past couple of years and it's been shown by the stats when Conklin is in there Derrick Henry rushes better his stats are better and they also drafted Jedrick Will so they fixed their two tackle positions I still think they need to address the inside of the offensive line a little bit more but for the most part Cleveland has only done things that would help Nick Chubb going into 2020 and then moving into the number four spot we have the guy i just mentioned king henry derrick henry our lord and savior of the dreadlocks as uh, chisel donis would say derrick henry comes in at number four which i actually found as a shock to myself when i was making this list because i thought i was gonna have him at number one you know why because he's the best pure rusher in the nfl today but that's the thing similar to chubb he's the best pure rusher now let's get into it a little bit Looking at his past two years, starting with 2018, which was really when Henry broke out. As in previous years, for some reason, Tennessee decided to have somebody else start over him or have a running back by committee. Honestly, if they let Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry run free as he should have before 2018, since his rookie year in 2016, he might have had a similar career path as Zeke Elliott did. But that's a conversation for another day. Looking at his 2018 stats, he had 215 rushing attempts for 1,000. Uh, I almost said 500, 1,059 yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, averaging uh, 4.9 yards per attempt. But then his receiving, his receiving game was only 18 targets, 15 receptions, 99 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per reception, no touchdown. In 2019, obviously the year where he became King Henry, where he just demolished anybody on the field. He had 303 rushing attempts. 1,540 rushing yards, 16 rushing touchdowns, averaging 5.1 yards per attempt. And then in the receiving game, again, though, another disappointment, 24 targets, 18 receptions for 206 yards, averaging 11.4 yards per reception and two touchdowns. If you guys really want to know his um uh, stats for 16 and 17, just really quickly, the rushing stats were... Uh, 110 attempts for 490 rushing yards with five touchdowns in 2016 and then 176 rushing attempts for 744 yards and five touchdowns in 2017 like i said they for some reason did not give him the full reins of the running back room in those two years now then as as you just saw as i listed off derrick henry is probably the best pure rusher in the nfl not necessarily over the past two years but over what we've seen what he that he can do when given full control of that offense derrick henry is the pure reason that the tennessee titans were in the playoffs this year and the reason that they went as far as they did into the playoffs they had a legitimate chance of making it to the super bowl riding on the coattails of king henry i have never seen a more powerful running back a more powerful rusher in my time watching the nfl than when i've seen derrick henry what i saw him did over the past two years it's more so in 2019 than in 2018, but 2018, I think it was that game against the Jaguars where he really broke out, um, where he really showed people, this is what I can do if given a chance to just, you know, go out there and run and be a manhandler and be a mauler, where he literally, and then and in the past year, he turned Earl Thomas into a blocker, swing him around, and then used Earl Thomas as a blocking device, and then just, just trucks people over. I mean, the guy is an absolute specimen of a human being if you could call him a human being he's huge 6'3 247 pounds that's an outside linebacker that's a 3-4 pass rusher and he uses it to his to his advantage an absolute monster on the field in Derrick Henry in the running game in the pure rushing game now you could definitely make the argument when you have a monster like this in the rushing game there is no need to be a receiver but the fact of the matter is Running backs in today's NFL, they're also re wide receivers. That might be an unpopular opinion for some of you. I don't know. I might get some flack from Tennessee Titans fans. But there's a reason more and more backs are adapting to the receiving game. And there's a reason I can't put Derrick Henry higher than this. It's because the next three backs on the list, they all in some way, shape, or form has adapted and added the receiving game to their repertoire. Even Ezekiel Elliott, who before 2019, I considered the best pure rusher in the NFL. He has done a lot to add a receiving game to his repertoire. Now, in no way do I want anybody to think I'm disrespecting Derrick Henry. Like I said, if this was a list just based off of the best pure runners in the NFL, who would be a, a top of it. I mean, you look at the fact that he's still, I believe, second 
in the NFL um, when you consider broken tackle numbers with 29 broken tackles and it's not like a Nick Chubb where Nick Chubb had 32 because for the most part he had to break tackles to just get a one yard gain no Derrick Henry over the past two years in both 2018 and 2019 the Titans offensive line had ranked top 10 in 2018 they were number nine in 2019 they actually improved to number eight overall and their rushing game has always been good because of a Jack Conklin and the way that that Tennessee offensive line gels now in 2020 however I'm not sure how it's going to go. They lost Conklin to the Browns, obviously. I'm not sure if the replacement they got is going to even live up to what Jack was. And then you consider the fact that now teams, in my opinion, are going to purely stack the box against the Titans. There's definitely, you have to worry about the passing game. And maybe I'm, I'm just not a believer in Ryan Tannehill, but I don't think teams are going to take too seriously to Ryan Tannehill. And they, they're probably going to stack the box more often than not. We'll see how Henry does against that. I still expect him to have a great 2020 season, just probably not as good as this 2019 one. And that also plays into why I have him at number four here. And then going into number three, I got Ezekiel Elliott. And this might get some hate uh, from Cowboys fans, maybe from NFL fans in general. Uh, but Zeke Elliott is my number three running back because I do view right now that there's there is, in my opinion, two other backs in the league that are better than him entering the 2020 season and obviously basing off of what they did in previous years. But it's like, it's like, yo, I'm not disrespecting any of the backs on here because they're in the top five. All five of them are amongst the best in the entire NFL. But Ezekiel Elliott, man, let's talk about Zeke over the past two years. In 2018, 304 attempts for 1,434 rushing yards, averaging 4.7 yards per per attempt six rushing touchdowns and in the receiving game 77 receptions for 567 receiving yards 7.4 uh, yards per reception with three rushing touchdowns and then in 2019 301 rushing attempts uh, 1357 rushing yards averaging 4.5 yards per attempt 12 rushing touchdowns 54 receptions with 420 receiving yards and nice averaging 7.8 yards per reception and two rushing uh receiving touchdowns just absolute monster numbers from zeke and that's really what he's been since entering the league in 2016 where he had 1600 rushing yards and led the nfl was the nfl rushing leader his 2017 season was a bit of a sophomore slump that was, but that was more so because of his suspension than anything else he still almost got that thousand yard mark but zeke has been a pure monster since entering the nfl has been one of the best pure running backs pure runners in the nfl the only person that rivals him is as i said derrick henry but ezekiel elliott has been one of those top guys always in contention for rushing leader always out there and the driving force of the cowboys offense in my opinion the reason the cowboys offense works is because of ezekiel elliott without him the cowboys offense would not be nearly as good as it is or even nearly as good as some of us projected to be in this upcoming season but that is also because Zeke has a lot of help from his offensive line, um, which is an argument you can make about Derrick Henry as well. But Ezekiel Elliott definitely has a great offensive line with the Dallas Cowboys, something that surprisingly, even with the retirement of their center, Travis Frederick, I expect to continue to be a great offensive line in 2020 because they had a great replacement, a nice young guy in Tyler Biotish that really is just a young version of Travis Frederick. But the, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line has basically been top 10 in the league since 2014. Um, they were top 15 actually in 2018 and then last year in 2019 they were number 4 in the league and actually number 2 in rushing. So that just lets you know how good of an offensive line that Zeke is running behind. But he's still out here breaking tackles with 24 broken tackles last year I think. Still within the top 10 of the running backs and broken tackles, that puts him at number 9. So the dude does get downfield, and we notice, you just look at, it, at his tape, you look at his highlights. Zeke does get downfield, he's a, definitely a downfield hard runner, not an agile back, a power back. And in terms of his outlook for 2020, I mean, I expect Zeke, just like Derrick Henry, to continue to have a great season in 2020. It's just that I am, I am a little concerned with their new head coach and Mike McCarthy. Um, Mike McCarthy is more so known as somebody, at least in his years with Aaron Rodgers, we have yet to see how he does with a different quarterback, which is what we're going to see this year. 
I I definitely wholly believe McCarthy was bringing to help Dak or whatever quarterback they have behind Senator in Dallas. And I think he's going to focus more on the passing game than the running game. That's not to say I think that, that Dallas is just going to abandon their identity, which is a rushing team. But I do think they're probably going to rush it a bit less. I, I really wholeheartedly believe he was brought in here to help the passing game. How much so, you know, how much so that he takes the emphasis off the rushing game? I have no idea, but I do maybe expect a dip in Zeke's stats or maybe even a replica of his 20 excuse me I choked there a little bit of his 2019 stats because people even argue that this was a down year for him but I expect nothing but good things from Zeke going forward and really with these top three guys there's not negatives that I could list because I view them as the perfect running backs you could choose any one of these top three and have a great running back for the next 10 years they're 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 essentially perfect so coming in at number two is my favorite player in the NFL you know Saquon Barkley the Giants running back and Saquon real quick before I get into his stats man Saquon is just my favorite player in the NFL so maybe a little bit of my subjectivity will come through here I mean it is an opinion based video overall it's my opinion I try to be objective as possible as objective as possible but at the end of the day it's still my opinion now let's get into Saquon stats in 2018 had the great rookie year 261 rushing attempts for 1307 rushing yards averaging five uh, yards per attempt with 11 touchdowns 91 receptions, 721 receiving yards averaging 7.9 yards per reception and four touchdowns in 2019 definitely a sophomore slump but definitely because the dude had an injury in fact it was the first injury of his entire career um, when you look back at it, he was never injured in high school or college. He got injured in the NFL with a high ankle sprain, went down in week three, came back early, which was a wrong decision on his part and probably a stupid decision because he played hurt for about like next three or four weeks before he really got back to himself. In 2019, he had 217 rushing attempts with 1,003 rushing yards, averaging 4.6 yards per attempt, six touchdowns with 52 receptions, 438 receiving yards, an average of 8.4 yards per reception and two receiving touchdowns now listen like i said he was completely injured in 2019 but he still managed to get to a thousand yards there was a game in 2019 against the jets where he had one yard a total of one yard rushing but somehow some way he still managed over the course of the season to reach that thousand yard mark i find that incredibly impressive and of course it's no secret that the giants offensive line has been one of the worst in the NFL for essentially the past three or four years. In 2018, the offensive line ranking, they were 21st in the league. In 2019, while it did improve, it was a very marginal improvement to around 18 or 17th in the league. Still bottom 15, still in that bottom half of the league. And I think amongst the running backs that I listed here, the only other running back that had a worse line than Saquon was Nick Chubb, but Nick Chubb was fully healthy. And I'll tell you what, I'm kind of going to use that as a comparison a little bit. If Chubb can get near 1,500 yards with the 23rd ranked offensive line when healthy, I think Barkley can do the same thing and get at least 1,500 rushing yards in this 2020 season, this upcoming season. I don't know with what ranked offensive line is going to be, but the Giants did work on that offensive line heavily this offseason. We already had two good guards in Kevin Zeitler and Will Hernandez. They needed to fix basically everything else. They drafted um, one of the best tackles in the draft, in my opinion, the best tackle in Andrew Thomas to be at that blind side protector for DJ and also help out in the running game on the left side. I think they're going to shift Solar over to the right and then they got the future right tackle in Matt Pert and even more offensive line depth, the inside depth in Shane Lemieux, maybe even our starting center. Whatever the case is, the Giants focused heavily on the offensive line and that with a Saquon Barkley is only going to equal a bounce back year for him, which I fully expect him to get. I mean, look at the look at what he did with a bad offensive line in his rookie season in 2018. It was supposed to be an improvement in 2019, but the injury hit him. Should Saquon stay healthy, I fully expect a great year in 2020. And for the broken tacking numbers, numbers in 2019 of course it was not that good only 19 broken tackles but once again you take into account the injury in 2018 when he was healthy and with a worse offensive line he was second in the league 
in broken tackles with 30 only behind Derrick Henry who had 34 and um just as a clarification here because I I just realized that there's two different broken tackle numbers this is broken tackle on rushes not uh broken tackles overall which includes the receiving numbers which if I did include that Barkley was actually number one in the league uh with 94 broken tackles in total in 2018 but I'm focusing on the rushing stats here I fully expect him to have a better better year in 2020 and because he's going to be in an offense now that emphasizes and uses the running game a whole lot more than the offense he was in previously. His, of course, the receiving numbers. He's one of the better receiving backs in the NFL. I also expect those to go up as well because he has more of a receiving talent. Uh, and this is not a shot at, at Zeke, just that he has more receiving talent than Zeke, who Garrett has worked with in the past. So I expect that Garrett to use Saquon a little bit more when he comes onto the Giants here. And then at number one, is Christian McCaffrey. I'm crowning him as the best running back in the NFL right now, and you cannot blame me. Uh, let's look at what he did. First in 2018, 219 rushing attempts for 1,098 yards with five, an average of five yards per attempt and seven touchdowns. 107 receptions, 867 receiving yards, 8.1 yards per receptions, and six receiving touchdowns. But in 2019, where honestly, the dude had a great case for MVP, 287 rushing attempts, 1,387 rushing yards, 4.8 yards per attempt, 15 rushing touchdowns, 116 receptions, 1,005 receiving yards, 8.7 yards per reception, 4 receiving touchdowns. 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving, by far the best running back in the NFL when you talk about stats like that. Especially when you throw in the context that he didn't really have a quarterback last year. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was the offense for the Panthers last year. You know, Cam went down very early and then he had Kyle Allen thrown to him. And then at times even other quarterbacks and he still amassed a thousand yards receiving. He got nearly 1400 rushing yards off of 287 attempts, not the 300 mark, but still within there, still within that 300 mark. On a Carolina team that honestly, if you remove McCaffrey from it, are they winning more than three, four games? Are they? Like, there's games where McCaffrey completely took over for them to even be in contention for a win. And yet, they, they were still as bad as they were. And when you talk about the offensive line performance of Carolina, they were ranked 17th in the league in 2018 and actually decreased a little bit in 2019. They were ranked 18th in 2019 because of lackluster performances from Matt Paradis and Daryl Williams heavily playing into that. And McCaffrey is a very safe runner as well. You know, I don't really expect, you know, knock on wood, any injuries his way because of the way he runs. It's a little bit of a mixture of agile. He shows power when he needs to, and it also shows in the broken tackle numbers. Ranked 17 in the league for broken tackles when rushing. 16 um, broken tackles, same amount as Barkley, but that's because McCaffrey just kind of avoids uh, tacklers when he's running. But I mean, overall, this dude is what you want in a running back in today's NFL. He's the perfect specimen for a running back. He was the best receiver for that team and definitely the best runner. A thousand yards in both categories. That's what you want in today's NFL. And the fact that he did it at such a high level, the fact that he did it at such high amount of production and he was without a doubt the best player on his team. He got a couple of MVP votes. Christian McCaffrey had a real case for MVP last year. In my opinion, he should have gotten more, but you know, the NFL favors quarterbacks more so than uh, running backs. And he, he also suffered being on a losing team. So that plays into it as well. But McCaffrey, I think without a doubt, is the best running back in the NFL as right now. Now that's a crown that he's gonna have to defend a lot next year. And when I talk about how I think he's gonna do in 2020, I'm actually not sure just because I'm not familiar at all with Matt Rule coming out of Baylor, coming out of college. I'm not sure how much he's going to use Christian McCaffrey. Maybe he's just going to use him as a pure runner and not so much as a receiver. Um, I mean, the only receiver on Carolina that comes to mo come to mind is Moore. Maybe he is going to continue to use McCaffrey as a receiver. I'm not sure. It's very uh, much, you know, unlike the fact that I actually know a bit of Jason Garrett because Garrett has been in the league for, you know, decades now so we know a little bit about him but rule his offense is something that i'm definitely gonna have to wait and see how it turns out i fully expect mccaffrey to continue to have great rushing numbers i just don't know how he's gonna be using the receiving game and it's gonna be tough to defend the title and defend the crown of best running back in the nfl when you're not sure how your receiving game is gonna be 
because it's, it's just a fact that plays into it now. But that was my list for the top five running backs in the league. Running it down real quick, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, and Christian McCaffrey. Let me know what you guys think. Um, at the end of the day, as objective as I try to be, it's still my opinion, so disagreements are welcome. Let me know how you guys would rank him, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.